Hi everyone, I'm Rob Anderson and this is the Mainframe Exchange. In this episode, I sat down with Steve Stewart, Global Head of Mainframe Migration and Modernization at Amazon Web Services, or AWS, and we talk about everything from COVID to baldness, and he gives us some really great insight into what's driving folks to migrate mainframe workloads to the cloud, how to set yourself up for success in your own modernization projects, and all the cool stuff that AWS has been investing in when it comes to moving the mainframe to the cloud and retiring Big Iron. To say Steve's been around the block is an understatement. He's been in the legacy modernization game since the fall of the Soviet Union. Prior to AWS, he graced the halls at Estadia as CTO and managing partner. Uh, he went to Florida State University and he knows Portuguese. This episode is brought to you by Advanced, a leading provider of application modernization services with unique expertise in the mainframe modernization market. Find out more at oneadvance.com forward slash mainframe. Welcome to the show, Steve. Um, we are so happy to have you here. You've been a very busy man here recently. Um, big transition. Um, you know, AWS has, has put a lot of muscle behind the mainframe modernization practice. And, uh, you know, I, I hope I'm not exposing too much here, but, you know, you've put almost three decades worth of experience behind mainframe migrations and modernizations, so they couldn't pick a better guy. Um, Thank you. You know, I, I'm sure you've probably seen what I've seen, and that is, you know, COVID aside, the popularity of migrating workloads to the cloud has skyrocketed in the past 12 to 18 months. Um, we, we just finished... Uh, wrapping up a, an annual survey that we do at Advanced called the Mainframe Modernization Business Barometer Report. Nice short title. And, um, you know, close to 97% of the folks that we surveyed had active cloud migration plans or were moving in that direction already, which isn't any surprise to anybody. Um, and I thought one of the more interesting statistics was that 87% have plans to migrate at least one legacy system to the cloud in the next 12 to 24 months. So it is it is on like Donkey Kong, as they say. Um, you know, given given your your history in the space and where you're sitting right now, what do you think's driving this stuff? It's the craziest time. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Um... It's, uh, I think it's a, it's unfortunate, it's like a perfect storm in that, you know, A, uh, we've delayed the decisions to do something. Yeah. So now you have uh, an aging workforce and actually, you know, peer research talks about, uh, it was a 64,000 people turn 65 every day. And so the baby boomers are retiring and, and we're at a passing of the time moment. And then smack in the middle of this, you know, as the baby boomers are, are aging, right, and, and and retiring off, then you have COVID. That yeah. kind of forced, you know, yeah, we're going to do digital, and some of the mainframe folks are kind of digital, but then they said, okay, we have to be digital. And and the gap from where they were and where they needed to be was too far. That was forcing a lot of uh, digital strategies. And then the next thing happened was the availability of, uh, you know, trying to get access to data quickly, but you know, the agility, right? If you're competing with a born in a cloud company that doesn't have to deal with quarterly releases or annual releases or whatever release cycle you, uh, the mainframe folks have, is how do I get become more agile? So a lot of these things kind of fed to a, the transformation of, of, of workloads to the cloud. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wild. I mean, 78% of folks that we had surveyed said, that COVID was a huge factor in driving their modernization plans. Um, it was all over the news too, you know? I mean, there were states falling apart and, you know, cloud native companies like Zoom were taking off and it was a big stress test for folks. Right. It, it was a, for, you know, we were, <laughs> everybody was at the edge of the, you know, the diving board looking and then you got that big push. <laughs> yeah. Like you're in the cloud. You're, you're we're jumping. Whether you know, and this kind of it was kind of fun. And then once, once, when, when uh, one company goes, 
and then more and more. I mean, I've never seen a uh, an increase of different types of companies jumping in. Uh, I mean, they were already in the cloud, but we're talking about these workloads and 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 and, and look, you know, uh, modern modern systems and advanced and 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 you know, we've been around for a long time. And and I'm in accounts where literally two years ago, when I was talking about, hey, let's uh, talk about transforming your mainframe workloads to cloud. You know, the guys calling security and escorting me out. And and these companies are now yeah. actually doing it. And so, and, and there's the same people. So there's been a definite shift in this, in thinking and embracing of that, uh, that I think is really what's been going on. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I think that all of these projects, as you know, so well are complicated. They are extremely unique and, uh, you know, when, and, and not to, you know, trash mainframes, mainframes are incredible machines. They are you know, very, very reliable, super robust, great at transactions. Um, and I think a lot of folks prior to some of this sort of stress tests that came from COVID and, and some of the economies of scale that we're seeing from the cloud came, they said, look, I, I've got other problems to deal with. The mainframe works. Well, know. yeah, it, it, but I mean, the, the way I look at it is that, look, I'm a mainframer. I'm a COBOL developer. I've been doing that for many, many years and, you know, and and I made the transition. But the, the reality is the mainframe has been a wonderful invention. I mean, the JFK Moonshot Speed actually created the mainframe to put uh, for the Apollo mission. Uh, the, the mainframe put us on the moon, but it's it's the cloud that's going to put us on Mars. Yeah. And and it's that transition of, of of just technology, and and there is a passing of the baton moment that's happening right now that we have to uh, you know we have to embrace, and we're seeing more and more competitors be more and more agile, leveraging the cloud, and and going you know after these types of workloads and and moving, and uh, it's something that you know you know at AWS we're looking at the mainframe workload as strategic because our customers have been asking what are we going to do about these it's great that we took these x86 servers but what about all this other stuff yeah and and so that's a lot of the, the reasons why we're making the investments that we're making in the and and going after the strategic workload for our customers yeah and i mean you know the spend cost it's it's always a part of the equation and you know in in recent years not only from a from a technology perspective, but simply from a, a Moore's law cost perspective, the the delta between you know MIPS and MSUs versus cloud consumption is so huge, um, and and the only at least in my opinion, most of the risk that was perceived was the if it ain't broke don't fix it stuff, um, and and now that we've We've experienced the COVID stress test. There's really nothing standing in the well, way. Well, the issue is that if it's broke, you know, if it gets broken, who's going to fix it? That's the problem, right? <laughs> That's right? right. <laughs> yeah, it's not broken now, but the problem is people are leaving. And and I love that Moore's law. I mean, that that is so true. Uh, nobody envisioned that, you know, back when, you know, when they went to IBM and said, hey, we're going to focus on a personal computer. And, I, you know, Intel was kind of born and, and all that stuff, that these chips are actually – you know, running, you know, a newsflash, uh, the cloud's been running mainframe size workloads for a year. Yeah. Look, up there, I work for Amazon. We're, we're, that's a mainframe class workload, 24 seven, thousands and thousands, millions and millions of SKUs, order processing, credit card processing, inventory, you know, PCI, security, all that stuff available 24 seven. That's mainframe class workload right there. We don't have a mainframe. So you're able to run the mainframe workloads uh, in the cloud. They've been doing it for years and we're seeing bigger and bigger uh, mainframe workloads. And, and the, probably the biggest difference that I see is that, well, I've got, you know, 300,000 MIPS and there's no way you can run that. I go, no, you have multiple LPARs that equate to 300,000 MIPS and you do it one piece at a time and come up and plan it and, 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 and talk about it as to how you want to do these things. And proper planning and understanding the integration points and the dependencies and all those things, it, it can be done for all types, all size workloads. Absolutely. How do you, uh, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. I, you know, it, it's funny because you think about it every time I have a conversation like this, I, I end up getting, I don't know if I want to call it hate mail. Let's stop a little short of hate mail, but um, some commentary about, you know, listen, 
COBOL, the mainframe, it's all viable, it's all great. And, and I don't necessarily disagree, but there's something to be said about the fact that nobody's doing greenfield development on brand new mainframes. And, and few, if any, kids in college are, are studying, um, you know, how, how, to, how to write programs in, in CAJN and natural. That's for sure. And so that should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, and, that, and that's a, the you know you do get the the folks in the cheap seats screaming at you um, as you do these things. But you know I, I think from uh, you know if you look at all the patterns that exist for transformation uh, that we prescribe to, and and some that you know modern alliance that you know there there is a um, you know leverage the uh, the cloud for development. Some customers are okay staying on the mainframe, you know, and that's and that's okay too for our customers. Yeah. And there's others that you know if you look at. You know, I, I prescribe to that the reason why you can't find COBOL developers, you can't find TSO, ISPF COBOL developers, but if it's in an IDE like Eclipse and Visual Studio, maybe it's a little easier because that's what's hard about it. So, so you know, we, we do in one of our patterns is, 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 is that, you know, the rehost pattern, the lift and shift of existing COBOL to COBOL that, you know, Modern also prescribes to. Uh, for yeah. that, so it's it's a, it's just a totally depends as to what our customers want to do, and and we'll support that journey for them. Yeah, and, and speaking of which, uh, you know, AWS commands more than thirty percent market share in in the cloud space, and as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, you guys have invested a ton of time and resources and attention to your mainframe migration competency program. Um, in fact, you're as far as I know, the only cloud provider with a formal mainframe migration program that's got, you know, a good bit of funding standing behind it. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on and, and what that's what that's made out of? Uh, we're, we're, I mean, we're listening, we're listening to our customers. Um, and, and then our customers are basically asking that, um, what, you know, what are we going to do about these other app, uh, legacy platforms? But if you look at I'll, I'll just tell you the story. I mean, this is my personal epiphany in that, you know, I was at reInvent in 2019 in December, and then there was, um, you know, Andy Jassy. Andy Jassy comes out, and he has a DMS truck, and they're cleaning out the garage, and there's a mainframe. And he said, oh, look here, look what we got. We have a mainframe here. That's the first time that, you know, I saw the CEO of a major cloud provider say that we want to go after the mainframe. And that was like a, wow, you know, and 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 you know that that's that was an epiphany moment for me and and so that was december and march of 2020 i'm at aws and so uh you know they started looking and building and and in uh building that and mars in november of you know 2020 we and that we pre-announced the mainframe migration competency program where yeah. we want to certify folks that have that and uh, Modern was one of the charter members of that pre-announcement. And then in March of 2021, we formally announced 15 partners, five tooling vendors, and 10 consulting partners to do mainframe transformation for our customers. And these are not just anybody you just go pick. These are people that have been there, done that. They had to do 10, 10 mainframe migrations. So each of, we have 15 partners, each done 10. That's 150 mainframe migrations just between that ecosystem. Yeah. So it, that that's a very powerful message for our customers that we are building the team, um, you know, within our ecosystem, within our partners, identifying the best tools. ProServe is investing to provide services within AWS as well to do that. We have a framework, best practices. Uh, the WWSO organization is investing in people and resources to be able to to describe the value proposition of transition mainframe workloads to the cloud or leveraging the cloud for their existing mainframe workloads. So it's a and, and it all starts at the top, and so that's um, I'll say you know you know Andy Jassy kind of put the stake in the ground back in no, uh, November of 2019, and here we are. It's amazing how fast that thing's moved. It really is. It's unbelievable, and you know it's funny because I think you've you've got the the prescription well balanced you know you everyone is is going to the cloud aws has such a great market share and, and a phenomenal reputation um, of being fast moving innovative and going in the right direction and when it comes to mainframe modernization the name of the game is experience with successful delivery um, uh, you know anybody can throw a tool together 
if you uh, you know retired and want to put a consultant consultancy in place, um, it's pretty easy to do that. But when it boils down to it, having locked in, delivered successful over and over mainframe modernizations and, and partnering with folks who have done that, that's a powerful tool. Oh, it is. Like I said, you know, um, you know, when I first met Cameron, I had a full head of hair, and I think Cameron had a full head of hair too. <laughs> I can't imagine um, Cam with a with a full yeah. head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it just goes, I mean, that's gotta be, oh my gosh, it's gotta be easy 20 plus years easily. Yeah. Wow. Right. In, in this space. And it's kind of interesting as uh, this thing has become in vogue, there's a lot of new companies popping out. Some interesting, others are yeah. going, okay, where'd you come up with this technology? But at the end of the day, we want to have tools that have been there, done that very mature with uh, people. You know, if you look at like, uh, you know, Barry and uh, Barry Tate and Cindy Howard folks that been there a long time and so uh you know, understand this and that and we need you know um that that artisan of the craft that understands the tools and how to do it and have that gut because there's really no recipe to this it's a this right. is definitely school of hard knocks um and, and which i we all graduated from <laughs> <laughs> doing these types of projects over the years yeah and it, you know it it's funny that you mentioned Barry and Cindy, that some of the heavy hitters in the space. Um, you know, I, I was talking to, to Cameron earlier and, and we were talking about, the, you know, the history of Advanced. And 1983 was when it was founded. And, and Cindy was one of the original founders, sophisticated business systems, yep. um, literally wrote the book on IDMS migrations. It's, yeah, serious business. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I met a new. I mean, I don't want. Yeah, it's almost way back when. It's amazing, um, but it's it's uh, this this you know there's a lot of these companies that are out there that have been out for a long time, and you know it's like I always state, you don't you know look at the different companies uh, that have been around for that long. You don't build a company based on failed projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that's that's probably the you know a nice uh, testament to what um, modern has been able to do with advanced. Yeah. And it, I I hate to keep going back to this this survey, but I, I thought it was it was cool to see that one of the things that was holding folks back from making a choice about how they wanted to attack their modernization was um, that they didn't really know the space all that well. Um, in other words, they didn't really know what their options were, and one of the big drivers behind. Uh, reluctance in the past was that they had tried to do uh, a modernization and migration in-house, full rewrite, you know, um, pie in the sky style endeavor, and and it failed. Um, it, and most of the time, when you go that route, it does. Um, in fact, seventy-seven percent said that they have started and failed a legacy modernization project before. Uh, but that you know that doesn't stop them. And and with with the right folks and and the right destination, it's good. No, I mean, that, and, and I think that's it's important when you're doing your, you're trying to start your journey is to, you know, uh, perfection is the enemy of good enough. And so, yes, this may not be beautiful serverless uh, lambda and all that fun stuff because there's a transformation you need to do. You're going to be in a transitional state architecture. But if I'm able to consume new services and I'm able to expose my data to QuickSight or all these other services we currently have, from machine learning to predictive analytics, is that good enough for the business as you circle back and add more functionality? Is it good enough to do an API gateway and add more features and functions and new channels to it? And so let's look at what your journey's got to be. And that's where the collaboration between AWS and Modern can help us, help our customers to achieve that 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 uh, mainframe transformation uh, help them with that mainframe transformation journey yeah and as as much as uh i wish my my job were easier in marketing that we could cookie cutter this stuff um these these modernization projects are so unique uh every single customer every single system and, and ecosystem that surrounds it is is so different that it needs to be attacked and uh in very specific and customized ways. Lots of application understanding, lots of information gathering. Um, when, when you think, based on your experience and, and everything that you've seen, when you think about um, some, some advice that you could give 
our listeners around where to get started. You know, I mentioned earlier, uh, how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time? Where, you know, do you start with the ears or do you start with the legs? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, um, you know, once you make the decision, you do this, this is really a team sport and you need to identify the team and, and the adage of are you in the bus or off the bus? I mean, that's really, you, you, you know, nothing makes, uh, I have four kids, nothing makes a long journey than a three hour drive with four kids, right? If you have, uh, you know, everybody agreeing as to what you want to do and where you're going, it makes it a lot easier journey, which is why it's important to have you don't need the passive aggressive people show up to help. So if you notice, I haven't, I haven't said anything about technology. This is 100% all of my scars are people, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so having that team composition is a good start. Next thing you need to do is you need to assess and figure out. You know, AWS provides um, uh, tooling uh, to help you assess your mainframe workload. Uh, you know, Modern has access to those tools as well, and you guys have your own. But, you know, assess what is it that I have, but also where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? What's driving this? Is it cost? Is it agility? Is it what are the big bolder items of the, the big items that you want to cover from the standpoint of impact to the business? Right. Is it maybe rethinking and, and go through the different types of the R's that everybody knows? You know, how do I which applications am I going to retire? And I would focus on that first, quite frankly, retiring applications. So you have the right. four applications to do and then and then focus as to which ones you want to do and almost apply a a Richter scale of impact. Group A, if we do refactoring because it does that. Group B, we want to do a, a rapid lift and shift for that. Uh, group C, we want to do uh, data augmentation or new channels, features, and functions and put them in the right grouping and align with what the business is trying to do. But it's just really, uh, you know, kind of get started. Now, uh, you know, from an AWS perspective, we want you to start this journey and we will help fund these initiatives, That's you know, right. uh, to, to do the assessment. And through our MAP program, we also help you transition the mainframe workloads onto the cloud. And we also have a database freedom. So any uh, commercially available database on the mainframe, we will help you and provide you with some credits for, for transitioning some of that workload over as well. So, so I, I would encourage, you know, folks that are, how do I get started? You know, contact Modern and, and then work with the AWS account team to come up with a plan for you and, and, and get, get you off in your journey. You know, um, and, and and let's get started. Yeah, and it's funny because the the assessment side of things, um, you know, when you're when you're talking about professional services in technology, um, assessments can mean lots of different things. But but in the the legacy modernization world, um, it can't be overstated how important an assessment is. I always joke with with customers and say, look, you know, if you can get us your entire estate that you're looking at modernizing in a single swipe, I'm buying beers for everybody. And I've never had, I've never had to buy those beers because it just getting everything together is, is a huge undertaking. Um, and, and the stuff that the stuff that folks find is always surprising. There's always lots of dead and unused code and, and, you know, a lot of history and debt, uh, that, folks would rather not not have sitting there and, and either never knew existed because they showed up late or completely forgot that they had done. No, it's kind of funny. So what you think you know ain't so. I mean, that's a very fact from the mainframe perspective. So what you thought was there or is not there, th th these are, and that's why these tools that are very fact-based, no emotion, is bottom up, and then you kind of create your own little Gartner quadrant of your apps. <laughs> you know, if you're down here in this quadrant, eliminate. You know, this is the, the Gartner time method to tolerate, innovate, modernize, eliminate. And so, you know, bad architecture, but value to the business, move those over, tolerate them, but move them over uh, and add more features and functions to that. But that's that you have to know what to where to start from. And you need to have that barometer from the business of the biggest impact to the business and also look at cost. Definitely. And, and uh, you know, cost from, from a, a big picture perspective as well. You know, you've got the the cost of not being able to innovate quickly. You've got the cost of all the resources that you've got to stick behind the legacy system. Um, you know, going to a, a single place across 
the IT team can really help ease things when it comes to integration, when it comes to deployment, and so on. I mean, it really is, it's turtles all the way down, uh, as they say. And, um, you know, I think I, I think teaming up with AWS and, and somebody like Advanced to start to peel this stuff apart is is a great first move. And, and getting that assessment done, getting a proof of concept out there to see that this is actually possible and that there's a, a huge advantage to bringing experts and their tools in to help you with this stuff versus tackling it on your own. Right. Or just choosing not to. All right, this is not on the job training type of work, and which is why seasoned people uh, need to be brought in with seasoned tools to do the work. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's funny, I was thinking back, we, we helped the New York Times go from a mainframe with their, with their home delivery subscriber service, which was so much bigger than I ever expected. I mean, obviously, you know, they're, they're a, a marquee media company, but they were, that system was 40 years old, pulling in something like $500 million worth of revenue a year. Um, and, and they did a phenomenal transformation learned a lot of lessons along the way, uh, ultimately a roaring success, saving somewhere around 70% in cost of that ecosystem on an annual basis now that they're in AWS. Unbelievable. No, I, 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 you know, um, as much as I love the New York Times, it's one of those that I actually was competing with Cameron on that deal. <laughs> That's how small this uh, sorry to bring up old traumas. <laughs> but, you know, I'm very familiar with it. And it's a, it's a very interesting, you know, they wanted to go down the refactor route and I was going down another route. But it's a, it's a great workload and it kind of shows you that, you know, the cost uh, savings that they were able to achieve on that and then they refactor that. Uh, it's great work, uh, that, and it's something that they're still doing today. They got out of the all those folks that were supporting that. I think we're on the sixth floor. You know, they're right across the street from the Port Authority. Uh, and and one of the key things that they're able to do now is, you know, th that subscription system. New York Times was also dictating how much how many issues to print. So they had these algorithms for like, hey, it's a bad news day, print this much, or it's a good news day, X amount. So, but now they can use AI and machine learning to to tell how many people how much uh, print that you need to do. So there's a lot of interesting things that they're able to do because of that transformation via refactoring. So it's a, yeah. it's a great win. And, and they're still, they're still running today. They're running on AWS today. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and they're actually even able to, uh, to rent out the floor that the mainframe used to live on to another tenant, which is, you know, double win. Yeah. Yeah. So that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, what's next with AWS and the mainframe migration competency program? Uh, tell us a little bit about, about strategically what you guys are, are aiming for and, and what you expect in the reasonably near future. You know, we're always reinventing ourselves and we're always looking at, uh, at better ways. So, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, we're going to continually listen to our customers as to what their needs are and, 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 and make adjustments accordingly. Uh, you know, mainframe is a strategic workflow for us, and we're going to continue working on, on that and moving forward. We, we need to, you know, uh, prescribe or actually we, we need to support all the patterns that we've identified that we talked about, like, you know, bring agility to your mainframe, you know, through the EC2 offloading, offloading development. Uh, maybe do tape backup for your mainframe. Uh, we have online one of our partners that we do that. The other thing is that you know do the a, a rehost like you know what Modern can help us with that as well, do, uh, and leveraging tools for uh, the rehost. How do we refactor applications for that? Maybe a data augmentation pattern where you, you move data down uh, and then do other things. Uh, but you know partners that will support all of these things is that we're always going to be looking to expand to. Because, uh, you know, mainframe transformation, not just one pattern, it's all the patterns. And, right. and, and, and the, the one thing that, that I would state is that, you know, I'm going to steal Nike, you know, just do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is, this is not bleeding edge. Right. Um, I, I, I did this about, you know, 20, 30 pounds ago, full head of hair. <laughs> and so it, it is possible. And maybe it that's is. the result of doing so many of them. You look like this. I'm the after, uh, after so many projects. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it is possible. And all it takes is this very basic thing: team composition, proper planning, 
know what the you know all the integration points how are you going to deploy that's just basic ta you know uh tackling uh, yeah. blocking and tackling stuff and then make sure that you have a tool and a partner that can actually deliver and help you guide you through this process um but again you know team composition is number one look within look within who are the ones that are going to make that transition with you absolutely so where can our listeners find out a little bit more about um, this program with AWS and engage a bit more? Yeah, I mean, right now we do have a, a, the, the competency program is up on our website. Um, and, and so you can definitely uh, go there. Uh, we have a, a, just a general email, a, a mainframe at amazon.com uh, that you can use as well uh, to communicate. But also just reach out, you know, to to the folks here at, at Modern to help us, or your uh, local account manager as well. So we have all these different mechanisms to to um, to to get to whatever information you need to do. Great, and uh, you know, on on the advanced slash modern side, um, our website is modernsystems.oneadvanced.com. Can learn more about what we do with AWS at slash services slash AWS. Lots of good information there. Read a little bit more about that New York Times case study. And um, yeah, let's get started. There's nothing stopping you now.